Hello, I recently completed a build on a DIY lithium iron phosphate solar storage battery. It's a 48 volt, 120 amp hour battery, uh, six, 16 prismatic cells uh, hooked in series. Of course, one thing led to another, and I figured it wouldn't make much sense just to do the battery project if I didn't um, take a shot of the solar systems and how it's hooked into the hybrid inverter and so forth. So I did that, and I'm going to try and splice it all together, and hopefully it'll make some sense. But first, I probably should do an introductory video. I was thinking, you know, with the fires in Northern California, uh, I'm in Southern California, our power is pretty stable most of the time. Um, so the reason I have battery backup isn't so much um, because I'm worried about an outage. It's, it's more or less to do peak load shaving. And just to have the convenience of it when the power does go out. In fact, they changed a transformer the other day and the power was out for most of the day. So it came in pretty handy. Anyways, that said, I basically I have an architecture that's set up with um, a solar city system that was purchased uh, as a lease 10 years ago uh, when we first moved in. It's a 2.8 kilowatt system. It's a high voltage string, a traditional inverter system on a three kilowatt Fronius inverter. And then after we uh, redid our backyard and put in a pond and some water features, then we figured we we're going to use more electricity, so I wanted to put in more solar. Well, I did some research and found that if I sourced the panels and the mounting hardware and the micro inverters myself, I can install a system for less than half the cost. And that's what I did. So altogether now we've got about uh, six kilowatts. Uh, the end phase feeds into a combiner box. It feeds to a sub panel that feeds to the main panel. And then along the way, I figured, well, time of use and so forth is going to come in. Prices are only going to go up. So I wanted to be ready. Plus the convenience of having battery backup was something that appealed to me. So I went ahead and put in a Schneider Connects XW 6848. It's got a pretty good rating. It's 8,500 watts for 30 minutes and uh, like 6,500 watts continuous, uh, depending on the temperature. If it gets hot outside, then it will derate. Based on the power usage in our particular situation, I opted to install the hybrid inverter in a whole house backup situation. Typically, you've got incoming power and then the load terminals go to a sub panel that's only feeding critical loads like your refrigerator and some lighting and so forth. And I didn't want to do that. I opted to install in such a way that I have full house backup and uh, it works just fine. Our power usage, even with a 410 air conditioner running, is never more than 5,000 watts. So that said, just wanted to mention uh, the system is hooked up in an AC coupled arrangement, meaning the solar panels do not charge the batteries. The solar systems are grid tie. They feed into the main panel directly. The batteries are charged via the inverter itself, and they just sit in standby most of the time with a trickle charge. So let me finish up real briefly. I'm going to talk about the pricing, just to give you a kind of a perspective of, uh, I guess, what the whole video was about, uh, saving money, doing it yourself. The first system, the Solar City system, as I said, it was a 2.82 kW system. That totals up to about 18,000, a little over $18,000 at the conclusion of the 20 year lease period. In about 2015, so that was an end phase uh, microinverter system. All the parts were sourced uh, via eBay. They were surplus parts. They were all new. They weren't used. Uh, they weren't um, seconds. Uh, they weren't junk at all. They were just a surplus product that um, other um, installers and DIYers had left over from their projects. And uh, it was a 2.9 kilowatt system. It's 11 panels. And that was $5,200, much, much, much difference in price. Uh, but to be fair, the actual cost of solar components between 2010 and 2015 did come down significantly. So it was not all reflected in just 
a labor savings. The, the actual materials are, are much less now than they were back in 2010. Uh, moving on, when I installed the hybrid inverter uh, with the first battery, it was about an $8,500 uh, adventure. Uh, that battery, I sourced it directly from Alibaba. It's from YIYEN, Yen Electric. Uh, it's a 7.68 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice system. It was $2,500 and about $500 to get it shipped over here. Um, it's got a couple of issues with the battery management system and so forth, which I won't go into detail on, but it's worked pretty well. Uh, for the price, I'm um, very happy with it. And the way it's packaged, it was convenient to hang on the wall in the garage. And you, you'll see that in the video. And then finally, I built a second battery because I, I wanted a little bit more uh, kilowatt hours uh, backing me up. This 120 amp hour uh, pack, all said and done, we're at about $2,600 for that, which isn't a bad price. Interestingly enough, I spent almost as much building my own battery as I did for a slightly larger one directly from uh, China. Uh, but the difference is I was able to package it uh, in the type of uh, cabinet that I wanted. I wasn't forced to purchase something off the shelf uh, with a form factor that I had no control over. And I was also able to uh, choose my own battery management system and my cell balancer board and uh, hook it up the way I wanted to. So there's certainly some advantage to that, especially if you're in a situation where um, you've got limited space or you need some type of a custom build. Uh, it's definitely something you can do yourself. This is the original Solar City system. 12 panels. It's about 2.82 kW, I think. And then on the side over here, these are two extra panels I added. They're part of an N-phase microinverter system that feeds into a combiner box. And this is the original inverter, Solar City. It's a 3KW Fronius disconnect. Then when I get inside the garage, I'll explain this a little more. I gutted this main panel and turned it into a maintenance bypass for the um, hybrid inverter. There's the same building disconnect, properly labeled. The 50 amp sub panel. This is my combiner box. I've got a line filter in here because this uses power line communication to communicate with the uh, Envoy, which would interfere with the Insteon system, which is at a very similar um, power line frequency. So this is the west side. This is my tool shack. Got two panels there, two on the other side. That makes four. And then there's seven up on the um, west-facing roof here. Kind of hard to see. Maybe I can go around and get a better shot. There's the two and the other seven for a total of 11 end phase microinverter panels. So now we're inside the garage just opposite the meter panel that I showed you outside where the maintenance bypass is installed. You can go into a little bit more detail. If you notice, there's um, a 100 amp and a 60 amp breaker in there. The 100 amp breaker is the bypass. It goes directly from the meter and nipples through the wall and feeds into the top of the panel here, if I ever want to do that. Right now it's off. The main power goes through the 60 amp breaker, through the box, into the junction panel under the Snyder inverter, into the inverter on L1 and L2 for the AC side, and then back out, and it back feeds the um, bus bars through a six, 60 amp breaker in here. That way um, I backed up the whole house and I didn't have to add a sub panel just for critical loads. Our energy usage is so low, and this inverter has a capacity of 8,500 watts for 30 minutes. Um, 
I can't see ever needing more power than that under any circumstances, especially during the day when the solar panels are um, making plenty of power to run the air conditioner and everything else. So um, I set it up a little bit differently than would be, I guess, uh, normally described for this type of hybrid inverter. But like I said, the advantage is the whole house is completely backed up and I don't have to worry about anything when the power goes off, which isn't that frequently. IYEN Electric, I sourced it on Alibaba from China. It actually works pretty good. It's got a USB CAN bus converter. The only problem with it is you have to have the computer out here to plug it in. I don't know how to um, get it on the internet or on the network. I'm sure there's an adapter, but that is outside my area of expertise. It works pretty good, although the state of charge never seems to be accurate. I guess the main point of the video was the actual um, battery, the 120 amp hour battery that I constructed from prismatic cells sourced directly from China. This is Saginaw Engineering Cabinet. This is a generic 24 by 30 cabinet. And I wanted to tuck it into the corner here, so I did put it on sliders. So I can slide it out and I can open it up pretty easily and get into it. There's a direct readout of all the cell voltages. There's the main menu. I like this little color touch screen, it works pretty good. This is a, a Ziva, Z E V A, zero emission vehicle uh, setup from Australia. But again, it runs on CAN bus. It's not on the network either. So I sent a few emails to the a guy over there. He's thinking about improving that situation. But again, it's a little bit limited because I can't see this um, by logging in. hundred and twenty amp hour prismatic cells. I think I paid about sixty five dollars each for these and about five hundred dollars to get them shipped over here. Hundred amp seventy five millivolt shunt. There's the Ziva BMS. And I did use ferrules on all the connections especially down on the bottom because I combined a uh, battery voltage adjustment board from eBay. I think it was like a $30 or $40 board. This is an actual active uh, balancer. It's not on now because the cells are pretty well balanced. They say it's good for up to an amp per cell. This one also has a battery balancing in the Ziva, although it's a shunt type, so it just wastes power to ground with a resistor. And that's a 100 amp contactor, basically a golf cart style contactor from electric car parts in Utah, although I've seen them on Alibaba for about the same price, or on eBay, maybe a little bit less. I cut all the bus bars out of uh, 16th inch by 3 quarter wide copper. Cut them out on the uh, router with a carbide bit. It's number two class M welding cable, very flexible, rated for up to 190 amps. The BMS is set to cut out at 100 amps, so I think I'm covered on, on current. According to the charts, these bus bars are thick enough for 100 amps, up to 115 I think, or 120. This back plate needed to be cut out so I could put the back two batteries in all the way up against. It's only six inches deep and each of these batteries is just under two inches. So I needed three rows. Had it cut out at a local welding shop. Had a nice uh, cutter, CNC cutter. And then I had them um, bend up a uh, intermediate shelf for the second set of batteries. And I basically riveted it 